I'm very upset about it, but maybe next year you change your number to one and then you could move right next to me. I'm sure you'll think about it, give it a lot of thought. <laughs> All right, it sounds like Coach is gonna join us in progress. Um, and so I think I'm getting the nod that it's okay to proceed with the student athletes, which first of all, congratulations. Um, let me give quick introductions, then we'll start the Q&A. Joined on the dais by Destiny Henderson, Aaliyah Boston, Victoria Saxton, and Bree Beal. Let's go ahead and uh, take questions. We'll start right over here, second row on the aisle. If you, if you could each take this, it seemed like there was more of a concerted effort to really drive the ball, play at the rim early on, and kind of knock them back on their heels. Was that the game plan coming in? Destiny, we're going to start with you and go down the aisle. Um, I don't think it was really our main focus, but um, just to, you know, do what, you know, what's working. So um, I felt like it was really important for the people who wasn't getting pressured to definitely drive because you have so much space. So just to execute um, and just see what's in front of you. Aaliyah? Yeah, I think them um, people attacking the rim was just solely um, reading defense, um, and they did what they needed to do to score. Victoria? Um, I just think everybody was just looking at the defense and seeing what was going on. Um, and, you know, like Henny said, just those that aren't getting pressured, um, they're just going out there and attacking, and that helped, and that's just what they did. Yeah, I definitely think this game, <clears throat> this, this game, we definitely made adjustments as far as, like, you know, me and Lily, they're sagging on us. So, you know, what else could we do, which was, you know, drive to the basket, drive and kick. So I think uh, as a team, we did make some great adjustments. Third row on our left. Andrea Adelson, ESPN.com for everybody. And maybe if Aaliyah wants to start, this is obviously a goal that you guys set from the end of last season to get back to this point, how do you feel now that you've accomplished it knowing there's still a little bit left? Um, it's exciting, but we just said in the locker room we still have unfinished business and we still have two more games to play. Victoria? Um, I agree. I just think that we, we got to know that we have unfinished business and go out there and do what we got to do to handle it. Bree? I think, again, what they said and just continue to stay level-headed and, again, we have two more games, so keep doing us. Destiny? And agree with all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we always say that. But, um, yeah, just to know that it's, we still have unfinished business, you know, to take in the moment right now and um, be happy for, you know, how far we've came. But we're not done at the end of the day. And just to, you know, not to not get too high with the highs and too low with the lows. Right down here in the very front on our left. This uh, Aaron Beard with the AP. This is for Aaliyah. Uh, first, who was it that jumped in? I guess it was Coach Jamil, maybe, who had jumped in your arms and hugged you on the court and you were actually holding him up. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> was, was, it also, was it also last year him that held you when you were as emotional as you were with the last shot? Do you remember against Stanford? I think he hugged you on the court. Yeah, yeah, he okay. did. I was just curious, like some players take motivation differently than others. How much did you sort of think about re replaying all those final seconds in your head all year as a motivation? to get back to this point, or did you at all? Yeah, so no, I didn't replay any of that. Um, I think part of growing up and maturing is being able to move on, and so that happened last season, but that's not something that I can continue to think about or else there won't be any progress. So I've let go of that since last season, and we've moved, moved on. Take our next question from right down here in front. Mike, you have a Gamecock Central, guys. I, going back to obviously even last season, the workouts in the, in the winter, and then being able to get to this point, I'm sure it's, it's extremely draining and even probably gets sick and tired of talking with us after some of these games and how many media availabilities it is. But getting back to this point, though, you know, how sweet is it to be able to get that victory, to see the confetti come down, to know that this is just one piece of the puzzle to be able to get back to that ultimate goal, to be able to, to hopefully you know, get to a national championship? Bree, let's start with you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think it's just, you know, amazing to see, like, all the work we've uh, put together. We had a few young pieces come in, and just seeing them be able to come in and gel with us and, you know, be great at what they're best at, it's just, you know, it's a cool thing to sit back and watch. Victoria? Um, it's exciting just to be able to get back here, um, and it's, it's exciting to see everybody come in and just take their role upon them and just play it as best as they can, and I think everybody's coming in and doing that. 
Aaliyah. It's been a long season of workouts and stuff, and it's just we've worked hard. So where we're at, we're very excited about it and can't wait to see what's next. I feel like it's just well-deserved. Um, I feel like, again, like everybody um, has stepped up to the plate. Um, we're all happy for each other and just living in this moment and be, just being present and just being happy for one another. Um, I just, it's just a blessing. Um, and we came so far, so we're not done yet. And that's just what it is. Yeah, Annie. Right. Yeah, Take our next question from the back left. You got it. Hi, ladies. Congratulations. Jeremy Durst, WYFF TV. Just wondering if you guys have any winter coats, or if you're going to have to go to the store this week. They are calling for a little bit of snow. I'm going to wash clothes. Just wondering. I think it's all shorts and tank top weather. Yeah. That's what we're packing. Right? Yeah, okay. pretty much. New clothes? I'll have my coat on me. <laughs> yeah. No, you're not. Sounds like you got a very straight answer, so let's go ahead and take our next question from the left, about halfway back. Yes, hi, Liz Clark from the Washington Post. Congratulations to all of you Thank for you. what you've Thank achieved. You. Um, this is for anyone who has an opinion, and it may be that none of you do, but um, your coach, of course, signed a very impressive contract this fall, the seven-year deal mm. for 22 million. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I believe she said, you know, she hoped it would be a benchmark for investment in the game. Um, you guys are not ADs, I understand, <laughs> but you're young women, and I'm wondering if that said anything to you about what women should expect in the workplace and maybe should demand if it's not offered. Or um, Well, Coach Daly is, I mean, what a queen, first of all. <laughs> yeah. And she's, she's done so much for the game of basketball, yes. and so everything that she's getting, she deserves, Sorry. and she deserves more. Sorry. You know, just in case anybody's listening, but um, she really deserves everything that she that she has coming for her, and I'm just really proud of her. And go get that check, honey. <laughs> Anybody else want to chime in? Um, I would. Yeah. Um, just to piggyback off her, um, I feel like she's done put in the work um, over the years so many times, and I feel like when you do that, you can demand things and make it happen. I feel like yep. she's in that position to do those things because she's, I mean, helped so many people and um, just brought in and created a family um, for the University of South Carolina as a whole and other people around the world who watch her or just watch the game of basketball, I feel like um, she's done an amazing job um, from the coaching standpoint and just outside of basketball. So, Take our next question over here on the far left. Cam, Cam Gaskins with ABC Columbia. This is for Aaliyah. I know the winning is the only thing that matters. Your personal accolades come second, but I got to ask, is it bittersweet to see the double-double streak come to an end? Or were you just too focused on winning and celebrating? I mean, we're on to the final four, so as the streak ends, it's all right, but we're still playing, so that's all that matters. We take our next question from fourth row, third in. I'm a bachelor in Sports Illustrated. Uh, with all four of you in double figures, you know, that doesn't happen all the time. What do you think that says about kind of the cohesion of this team and how balanced you are, you know, <coughs> across the board? Henny, we'll start with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Henny? We'll start with you. All right, so. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and start with Brie. I mean, it just shows, like, how well we gel together because we've been playing with each other for a while now. But it just shows, like, us going out there, not thinking, just pray, playing freely, just, you know, playing off each other, playing with each other. It's just amazing. Victoria? Um, I just go back to our roles. I just feel like everybody's – we're out there playing our role, and we, we're doing what we have to do. And, I mean, like she said, we gel. So I feel like that plays a big part. And I think it also shows that everybody's ready to step up at any time. Um, everybody did a great job scoring, Bree, especially when she was attacking the basket. Um, it's like you can't really stop that. Um, yeah, just I feel like all of us just being on the same page and just having one goal and keeping the main thing the main thing hey. has um, – <laughs> Just made everything a lot more simple for us um, when everybody's on the same page. So I feel like that's what's been happening with us, and we just got to stay focused. Question right here in the middle, second row. Hi, I'm Adler from The Next Hoops. I know in last year's run, y'all were thinking of how Ty and Kiki were robbed of the opportunity a couple years ago. Is that still in your minds during this run? Destiny? Um, that's not really something I'm thinking about because, I mean, we all got robbed. <laughs> right. But um, we... 
are fortunate to be in this position um, and make it happen for ourselves and also for them um, because they, they deserve um, the opportunity as well. So um, it's just something that's in the back of our heads, um, but it's not something that um, we're trying to get down of ourselves. So. I agree with that. I think it's definitely in the back of our minds, and we know that Ty and Kiki are definitely supporting us through our run right now. I also agree <laughs> that it is something in the back of our minds, but you know, we, we have something else in front of us right now that we have to worry about. So. Yeah, I de definitely to keep the ball rolling, we got to stay in the present and worry about you know what's going on right now and what's going on the next day. But yeah, sometimes it really it, it crossed my mind, I'm not going to lie. Got two more questions. We're going to start back here in the fourth row around the middle. Uh, Lindsay Gibbs with Power Plays. I wanted to ask at the end there, everybody celebrating with a band, everybody coming over and dancing with a band. What was that moment like? And being able to celebrate this with so many fans, um, it, it seems like everybody took the time to really savor that moment. Victoria, we're going to start with you. Um, it's, it's amazing to just be able to see all of our fans here. Um, our band, I love our band. They, they come and bring so much joy to us. They love us. Um, it's just exciting to be able to enjoy this moment with everyone. Aaliyah? I agree with that. I think it was just a fun moment, and it's also just adding on to just celebrating each other um, because we're on to the final four, and so just being able to listen to music and show off our dance moves was pretty fun. Um, I agree. I feel like the energy is really amazing. Um, I feel like that moment is something we can always look back on and just add it on to the memories. Yeah, I just think it shows like the connection, you know, within like our community. Like we really love one another and they, they love us. We love them. We love the energy they bring. They get us going. They keep us going. So, yeah, it's amazing. Last question for the student athletes right here in the second row. Corey Diaz uh, with the USA Today Network uh, for Destiny and, and Victoria. Obviously, with this being your guys' uh, last time around, I'm just curious if, if you guys have already maybe felt a little different sense of the mindset heading into this year's Final Four as opposed to last year. And if so, would you mind kind of just expounding a little bit on just kind of what you're feeling mentally uh, at this point? Um, I feel like last year, you know, is our first time. And this year, I feel like we, we know what it feels like now. So I just feel like just adding on to the leadership and um, just being leaders on the court and um, you know just making sure everybody else is on the same page. So I just feel like that's just really what it is. It's, it's just the growth. Um, and I feel like we both display that on the court. Um, I'll also say just taking in the leadership and being able to lead um, going into the Final Four, considering we've been there before, I mean, even some of the other girls that's been there before, they, they can lead from their standpoint. Um, that's all I just really think, that we just need to make sure everybody know what to expect and things like that. Thank you to all the student athletes. Congratulations on your regional title and good luck. Thank you. I'd like to go ahead and let Coach Staley have an opportunity to give an opening statement and then we'll take questions. Um, I just want to say that, uh, uh, being here in Greensboro and, and all the people, you walk in the arena, you know, at the hotel, um, really made us feel special. And I know I'm one that, that, that really looks at, you know, and, and I feel when, when people are genuinely just happy and inviting and host um, our tournament. And we, we felt that every, every time you walked in the door, it was always a greeting. It was always, you know, how you doing? And that makes, you know, that makes me feel really good because it gives our players a, an incredible, like, student athlete experience. It's not all about the basketball. That's a big part of it, you know. But when you walk into an arena and you feel the love, you know, for everyone that's, you know, that's, that's working here, the, the yellow coats and, and everyone, the, 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 the people at the, the hotel, the proximity, what, were just in incredible, just over the top. And then I I'd like to just kind of thank, you know, Creighton. I mean, congratulate them on a, a tremendous year. Um, you know, nobody probably had them in their bracket, um, being in the Elite Eight, first time in their program history. And it is really something to be proud of. I mean, we, we had a lot of firsts a few years ago, and, and I hope they hold on to it and, 
and, and, and come back stronger and, and, and move further in the tournament because it only, it only strengthens our game and it helps our game. So congratulations to them. And then I, I just want to say um, to our, our local media who um, have been just examples of treating, treating our, our program like a real sport for years, like years. This isn't like, you know, it's just happened. Um, you cover us. Um, you, you know, you, 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 you wear your heart in, in, you know, your, your writings, you, you wear it, you know, when you're, you're in front of the public on, you know, our, our local news and you wear it, you know, we win, you know, you feel it, we lose, you feel it. And we can feel that in how you cover our team. And we really appreciate it, um, for, for treating us that way. Cause every, every program, doesn't get what we get, and I, I, I value what you do for us, so thank you. We'll start our questions right over here. Don, thank you for that. Um, look, this has been a goal all year, and now that you're, you're, you're here, how do you strike the balance between celebrating a, a hard-won regional title but also realizing you got business to take care of in Minneapolis? Yeah, I mean, we, got, we got a couple days to do it. You know, I, I, our players – you know, celebrate it. They'll probably celebrate again. I hope they go to class tomorrow. Um, and then, you know, we got a quick turnaround because I think we leave on Tuesday. So I think we're going we're gonna to enjoy it. We got we don't play until Friday. We'll watch, you know, we'll watch who, who our opponent will be tomorrow. Um, and it's, it feels good to be the first one to go in and kind of watch everybody else sweat it out. Um, but we're going to enjoy it. You got some young players who – I have no clue what what it means to go to a Final Four, so we'll probably have to, you know, we'll probably have to hold them back a little bit because they, they just don't know the, the whole excitement of it. And then you got some older players who've been here before, and they have one thing on their mind, and that is to to win a national championship. And we do it game by game, but it it was it was pressure packed the entire season, and it's a relief to know that we're we're back, and now we can settle in and, and, and try to get this thing done. We go to the fourth row on our aisle. Augusta Stone with the state newspaper. Dawn, thank you again, like DC said. Um, I wanted to ask, you know, the group, the junior group that you say call themselves the freshmen still, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask about just seeing them advance to their second straight Final Four. You know, what is it in their mindset that you see that maybe has changed between last year and this year, just in terms of maturity and leadership, knowing what to expect at this level? Um, I feel that that particular group has learned how to just embrace um, the the margin of error each and every day, and they uh, they 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 practice like it, they play like it, even you know even through our losses, you know they really understood it, and I think just having the experience of what we had to go through, in in the final four last year, it's helped guide them, but it didn't control them like they were unafraid to to make plays or do things out there on the floor. Um, so they're just a year older, uh, with a year, I mean, more understanding of, of how to navigate through it and not get too high with the highs or low with the lows. Right down here in our very front. Aaron Beard with the AP. Um, Don, I was going to ask about Aaliyah, just when you talked about pressure packed all year from the minute she started playing the first game this year, everybody looked at her as all American and how does she, she seems pretty much like she's had the right mindset all year. How, how important has that been both for her and this team? I think it's, it's truly important. I think when, when you, you've had to play under the gun like Aaliyah has all season long, she's mature enough to handle it. Um, she's grounded. She knows who she is. And, you know, she, she never gets out in front of anything. She's just, she just takes the day as it comes. She takes her play as it comes. And um, that's just a real good sign of just maturing and knowing who you are, knowing your worth, and, and knowing that, um, knowing knowing that she's she's probably the you know the the player of the year, and it's hard to it's hard to play under that gun. Um, and I think it, it also helps that other people have uh, brought up some other candidates for national player of the year. It makes her work a little harder and focus in a little bit more because that's that's one of the things that she wanted to accomplish. I'm going to go back here, um, halfway back on our left. 
Grace Rayner with The Athletic. Dawn, from the Kentucky loss three weeks ago to this moment tonight, what have you learned about your team? Well, I've never lost track of who we are, who we were. I mean, we, we, we've always been a really good basketball team through, through the two losses that we've had. Um, and you have a tendency to, to lose focus on who you are when you lose a basketball game. And did we enjoy it? No, we didn't enjoy losing three weeks ago. Um, but it, it helped us focus. And we just went back to, you know, that, that margin of error. Um, we didn't, you know, we let it get out of hand um, in the SEC tournament championship, and, and Kentucky made us pay for it. Uh, but then we had time to regroup and then, you know, find our way to winning four games to get back to the final four. And, you know, I think now we're, we're in a good place to understand again. It, it's, there's no other, you know, position in the season that we have to be, you know, super focused on those things. Third row over here on our left. Andrea Adelson, ESPN.com. Don, as a follow-up to what you were talking about with the pressure of getting here, now there's going to be even more pressure to perform in the Final Four, just knowing how badly your players want to win a championship. How do you kind of balance knowing that with trying to keep them loose and not letting that pressure overwhelm them? Um, I, mean, you, you, I mean, we've created habits all season long. Um, and... You know, the habits that we've had, I, I don't think we'll stray too far from it. Uh, we, got a, we got a group of core group of players who just want to win. So I think they have a really good pulse on our team and, and they're able to calm things down when, when needed. And they also in, enjoy the moment, just like young people. So um, it's what we came to do. I mean, this, is, this year has been one in which we, we, we had a target out there, we got a target on our back, but we had a target out there to win a national championship and we put ourselves in this position. And I think they'll, you know, it, win, lose, or draw, it won't be from not trying as hard as they can. All the way back on the far left. Co uh, Myra Salters, SGTV. Coach Daly, knowing the type of player you were coming out of college and seeing that you almost kind of transferred that same energy to your players, do you hope that your players will transfer that same energy to girls who look up to them and also women who look like you, who hope to coach like you? What message do you have to players and women who want to do what you and your girls do? Um, I mean, I, I, I want our players to, to be who they are. And I hope that I, I set an example of um, sharing, you know, sharing um, my experiences, uh, my my love for the game, my love for the people in the game. And I, I just hope, and, and, and you know, I think they, they do that. But when we hosted the first and second round of the NCAA tournament, the first four, um, you, you don't really, realize your impact until you hear other people say things like, you know, I think it was the uh, incarnate word, some of their players, you know, really thought it was a big deal to be playing on the court that South Carolina plays on. Um, they thought it was a big deal to just kind of be around, you know, the place that I coach. And, you know, when young people do it, like you hear some older people here and there, but when young people who are our competitors say those things, um, and 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 they're unafraid to say it, like you know, that's what she, that's what those young ladies felt, and they they laid it on the line, even though we're in a competitive battle. Um, that says a whole lot. That makes me feel truly special, um, and and it helps me understand our worth, you know, our game you know, is being watched by young people, young women, and is being, is, they're admi admired by the people that's, that's in it. And I just hope that, you know, I hope that our players really understand their, you know, their impact on, on our game and, and hope they give it back. And they do, they do, without a doubt. They give it, they give it back to our fans, they give it back to anybody. They, they were just so gracious to take pictures with everybody in the arena no matter if we're going to get back at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. I mean, that's what it's about, is paying it forward. 
We're going to try to get to as many as we can, but we've got a question right here in the front. Mike, you have a Gamecock Central. Don, I know we saw some of your coaches maybe struggle, you know, with being able to cut the net down. I mean, they've been able to do this a couple times, but the point being is you guys have been able to get here so many times. You guys have been able to do so many great things. But, yeah, this is the first time in program history that you guys have been able to reach the Final Four in back-to-back -back seasons. I know it might not seem like the biggest thing right now because you guys obviously have bigger goals ahead of you, but just knowing how far this program has come to be able to continue to achieve first, even though you, you, know, you guys have been able to achieve so much over the last couple of years, how special is it knowing how far this program has come? It's, I mean, it's huge. It's huge. Um, and Asia Wilson's never been able to do back-to-back -back Final Four, so she's got to give credit to this <laughs> <laughs> to this team, um, but I mean it's I mean it's it's great. I, I'm I'm just super happy for, you know, I'm super happy for all of our team, but truly super happy for our juniors who experienced three years ago where you know we had a pretty darn good team um, that could have gone far in a tournament and it was just abruptly stopped, um, and then you're just left holding the bag like that's it, you know. Um, and then they come back and get us to the Final Four and, and lose in a heartbreaking way. And then it's, it's hard to get back. Like, our game is so good that, um, I mean, I was nervous all day today. Just, I mean, it was a long day um, on a Sunday. Um, nervous um, because of who our competition was and just anxious to play, anxious to get back just so our players can really experience um, being in the Final Four, our young players, just you know, understanding how hard it is and also to have them celebrate, you know, something as uh, monumental as, as, as getting back there, back to back. Next question from right behind. Dawn, you're a uh your lady's ability to accept that target on their back and, and go out and, and perform the way they've performed through 34 games so far this year. How much would you say is that a reflection on your personality and your, uh, I guess, embracing of the, of the target on your back that maybe you potentially had while you were a player and, and now a coach? Um, I mean, here, here it is. We're, I mean, we, we're going to face whatever music that's, that's playing. Um, we, we, I guess I, I have trust in our players. Like I, I, I know them, I know them at well. I know, actually, I know the core of them pretty well. Um, so I, I think with, with that group, you, you just have to look at them and look them in the eye and see, you know, where they are. If they're focused and, and probably 95% of the time, probably 100% of the time they've been focused all season long. Um, it's probably the younger ones that have, you know, it's, they, don't, they don't know. They don't play a whole lot, so they got a whole lot going on in their lives, and they really don't understand how to do it every single day, like, like to be on. I mean, it's really hard to be on every single day. Um, but we work towards that. It's the very thing that um, the core group of our team, um, they came here because of that. They watched us go to Final Fours and win national championships, and they wanted to be in the hot seat like that. So I think it's, it's a product of our culture. It's a product of, you know, our coaching staff and our, you know, our program, all the, all the people in our program, they make this, this thing work. Like every single person from our Dobo to our director of play, they, you know, we're working. Like we only showed them great examples of, of working. Um, so, you know, wherever that target is, we just, we just perform under the work that we, that we, that we put in. Next question, fourth row, part way in the middle. Emma Bacheleri, Sports Illustrated. Uh, with the offensive performance you all had tonight, was there any particular adjustment you attribute that to? And what does it mean moving ahead to have had a night where you shot 50% from the field? Uh, I mean, the, I mean, probably the, the biggest adjustment we made was on the defensive side of the ball. We, we just really concentrated on whoever had the ball that we were going to all out pressure them and make them put the ball on the floor. Like, I don't, I don't think you can allow Creighton. They did a really good job with us doing that, getting 17 assists on 21 baskets. Like, you know, they averaged 20. You know, they averaged 33s. They averaged, like, 10 makes. 
So we have to figure out how to take away something. One of the one of the big things that they they do to teams. Um, and then for us, from an offensive standpoint, um, we knew they were going to crowd um, Aaliyah, and you know, which would have made it, you know, single coverage with our other big. And once they had single coverage, we wanted them to go. And then as the game was going on, you know, they were they were doubling um, Aaliyah before she had the ball, when she got the ball, and then it created scoring opportunities for Bree Bill and. Um, Lili and, and some of our other guards and Henny. Um, once we have, you know, single coverage, and we know that you know they they're not going to rotate over because they're going to lean um, heavy on 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 keeping two people on Aaliyah, it, it made it a lot easier for us to make decisions and make baskets. Next question, all the way over on the left. Matt Dowell, watch Fox out of Columbia. Don, there's been so many great post players over the years, and I know Aaliyah said that she's not. She doesn't care that the streak is over, but for you, what's it been like to watch her on this double-double streak as she has shattered the program record, she shattered Sylvia Fowles' record? What's it been like to watch as, as her coach? Um, I mean, this is what she's supposed to do. Seriously, like, this, that's what she's supposed to do. I mean, I think she's a, she's a great talent. I think it, it, it goes to show how relentless she is. She's really a relentless player, a relentless rebounder. Um, but... You know, when, when it's all said and done, Aaliyah just wants to win. So she's going to do the things to win basketball games. And it's fortunate for us she did it in a in a double-double fashion. Next question right here, middle. Hi. So going off of Oh, sorry. Going off the question that Lindsay Gibbs had asked before about the celebration with the band, I'd also noticed before the game you were giving fist bumps to everyone in the game day ops row, and then yesterday um, during the Iowa State Creighton game you were you were you were um, saying hi to fans who wanted your attention um, when you could have been scouting. I was just wondering where that attentiveness and commitment to just finding time for people comes from. I mean, it comes from it comes from you know coaching in Columbia, South Carolina for 14 years, like. Um, we we give our our fans access to us, um, and in return, you know we we lead the nation in attendance for I don't know eight years now, seven eight years. Um, I mean it's, it's it's people. I'm really conscious of people spending their money, budgeting to come to Greensboro. Um, already, some people already had their plane tickets to Minnesota, and they would tell us throughout the year. And it's like, uh, I mean, let's, let's take it one game at a time. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm just happy that they, they, they choose our program to to spend their money to bring their families in. Um, it takes a second to take a picture, a second to take a picture, and a second to give them just a memory. An experience, and you know, one of our one of our one of our fans told me his grandmother told him, "When you treat people good, they treat you better," mm-hmm. and that's what the, the fans had done um, in Columbia, South Carolina, in supporting us. Two last questions, and we appreciate your time. Right over here on the left, fourth row. Uh, hi, Don Remy with the New York Times. Um, Given that there are fewer concerns this year about the tor- tournament with gender equity issues, what do you think is the next move for the NCAA to make? Um, somebody asked that question. It's units. It's, it's being able to, you know, being able to get, you know, similar, you know. I, I mean, I guess equity, like CBS, TBS, TNT, True TV, right? That's that's men's bass, men's tournament. So when we're able to market ourselves in that way, that's that's a lot of dollar signs. You know, when you know when you're when you're able to be on all of those in all of those uh networks. And I and I'm not saying anything against ESPN, which they do a great job at at at, at putting our putting our game forward. Um, but let's make it competitive. Let somebody bid out our tournament, and maybe we'll have a, a few more networks to show our games. Um, and then maybe, just maybe, and, and I'm just going to throw this out there, we're playing at 7 and, 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 and 9 on a Sunday night. I wonder why. Well, maybe because 
the men played at, at two and five. And I know we, we're good. I think the men, whether they played at seven and nine tonight, would have had a packed house. Doesn't matter. Um, if we played a little bit early, maybe we had some more people in, in the stands. And they did a great job at, at, at filling this arena up. But it's just little things like that that, that, that make a huge difference. Um, and I'm not trying to start any controversy, but units, you know, our game can be a, a game in which um, it's, it's, it's valuable, like in, in terms of dollars and cents. And once we're able to get there, um, we'll, we'll find our true value. Last question right here, fourth row. Lindsay Gibbs, Power Plays. Coach, you've been here been to the final four before you're very open about this isn't the final decision but as you're putting that confetti into your hoodie as you're savoring those moments what's going through your mind and why is it important to to really feel that confetti um I mean it's it's important because um you know you're we got we we are dream merchants for young people um um the young people on our team, they want to win. They want to win. They want to go to Final Fours. They want to win national championships. They want to win SEC tournament championships, SEC regular season champions. Um, uh, they want to win the Bad Boy Mo's championship in the Bahamas. They want to do all of that. Like, and and we are creating, you know, lifelong memories. Um, and and I think confetti is just a tangible thing as reminders of uh, what you have accomplished. And I, you know, I've, I've been a confetti collector for every like championship that, you know, that, that we've had. And it is just a constant reminder of going to get it, you know, going to get it, creating these uh, great experiences for our players and our coaches and, and everybody in our program, because we work really hard and it's really hard to get to a final four really hard um so i'm you know i'm just, just happy that uh we're able to do it and i'm gonna keep collecting it congratulations again and best of luck thank you that concludes our press conferences here at the green